In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to work with functions and pass information into a function. So I have other video tutorials that have already demonstrated how to create a void function and one that shows how to create these two functions that return a value. And so from this, we're continuing to build on and modularize this program. So, so far it's set up to display an intro. So this will call the display intro function that displays just some text output. After that, it gets input from the user for what their favorite sport is. And then it gets information from the user as to how old they are. So these are the functions that have been created. And right now they're being called from the main function in that order. So display the info, get their favorite sport, and get their age. And what we're going to do is continue building on with the get input and the get number functions. So first of all, the get input function is returning a string. Right? If we look at the function prototype, we can see that get input returns a string type back to it. So it's getting a sport that the user types in, returning it back, and displaying it as sport. Now, one of the great things about functions is that you can reuse them. And this would be a good example of how we can reuse a function. In our program, we're getting a string for their sport, and then we're also getting a string for their favorite travel location. So rather than writing a whole separate function just for getting their travel location, we can reuse this get input function for getting travel. So let's try that. Let's just say we're going to call the function again. And so this is, since this is going to get the string back for travel, we'll say travel equals get input. And we don't need the C in part here because that's part of what our function is already doing. Our function down here is already doing the C in to get a string input and then return it back again. And let's run this and just see what happens. So what is your favorite sport? Tennis, how old are you? And now we say, what's your favorite travel location? What's your favorite sport? So it's kind of repetitive. We say, what is your favorite travel location? And then we call the get input function. And then the get input function comes down here and says, what is your favorite sport? So we're saying, what's your favorite travel location? And then it's displaying this right after it and getting the input. So how can we customize this message? Right? Without customizing it, we would have to create another method or another function that would have a different string in here. So if we revise this function a little bit, we can set it up so that we can pass a string into it and tell it to use that to display our output message to the user. So how do we go about doing that? So let's go back up to where the function is called. So when we have sport equals get input, it goes out and it's displaying this static message. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out because I'm going to use that. And when we call our function, when we call the get input function, what we're going to do is pass it that string. When we use what's inside the parentheses, we're giving it an argument or a parameter. And we're going to pass this information into the get input function. So it's like saying, here's some information that you need in order to do your job. So we have to modify a couple things where we're referencing our get input function. First of all, we're going to say it's going to be sending some data to get input. And it's going to be a string. And we have to give our string a name. Now, we don't have to do that up here in our function prototype, but we will have to do it down here where we're calling or where we're defining the function. So string 
get input, it's going to be expecting to get a string from when it's, where it's being called from. And the, we also give it a variable name. So I'm just going to call it prompt to make it more generic. So what's going to happen is when the function calls get input and this gets passed in, this text string actually becomes the variable called prompt. So now when this runs, prompt is going to be equal to the string that's being passed in. And how do we display that then in our cout statement? We use our variable name prompt. So let's do that with the travel. What is your favorite travel location? We're going to move that into the parentheses for get input. And so this is where we're getting the travel location. We don't need this C outline here. So again, this is going to pass in this string to the get input function. This string will become prompt, and then that's what will be displayed to the user. So let me just finish setting this up here, and we'll do a C out to display travel so that we can make sure that the information that the user's typing in is getting returned back up to our function and uh, we have the right information assigned to it. So let me run this again and let's analyze what's going on. So what is your favorite sport? Tennis. And how old are you? We had that set up from before. So we'll put in that. And what is your favorite travel location? So now it did get the right prompt information, get passed into it. And let's say Hawaii. And then we print out Hawaii. And then it continues on with the rest of the program. So in this example, we were able to say our get input function is going to expect a string to get passed into it. In the function prototype, we only need to specify the data type. We don't have to specify the actual name of the variable that's used. When we call our function, right, we're saying get input and we're going to pass in some information to it that it can use. And so in this case, we're passing in a string. This string gets assigned to prompt. And then we're able to display this in the output. And then we really repeat the same process again for getting their travel location. The only difference is we're passing in a different string so that we can have a different custom output. So that one function called get input, I intentionally made it kind of more generic name rather than get name or get travel. I called it get input because we could reuse this over and over again for any kind of string. So that if you wanted to add on to this and you wanted to find out what their favorite drink was, um, if you wanted to get their name, if you wanted to find out their favorite animal, what kind of car they drive, you could reuse that same function the get input function over and over again because now it's very generic. And the only difference is when it's being called up here, we're using sport to collect and save the information that's returned from it as the sport. And we're using travel to collect and return the information for the travel destination. Now, just like we were able to do that with strings, we can also do that with numbers. Right, we're getting what their lucky number is, and we're also getting their age. So rather than writing a whole nother function to get their number, we can reuse the age function. And again, I made it generic, so we use the get number function. So get number. Now again, we have a hard-coded prompt in here with how old are you. So let's set this up in the same manner that we did with the get number. It's going to receive a string. And again, for ease of use, we'll call it prompt. And remember, this prompt will not interfere with this prompt because it's only going to be for this function, and it won't apply to this function. 
So I'm going to cut this out and make that my variable name. And then when we call get number, that's where we pass in the string. We say get number is going to need that string in order to ask the right question. And we'll set up to get their lucky number as well. So we have a variable called lucky and that's going to be equal to get number and inside our get number we're going to pass in this string that will become the prompt and I guess when we'll get this back out we will do a C out to print out lucky so we can see their lucky number so we have a single function to handle these two numbers and a single function that handles these two string variables. So let me run this, make sure everything works. Now, what do we have? No matching function call for get number. So I probably didn't change, I didn't change my function prototype up here to say that it's going to get a string. Now if I run it, okay, it succeeds and I can type in my information, lucky number. Okay, so this has functions set up now. We have a void function to display the opening intro, and then we have a function that returns a string for sport, and a function that returns a string for travel. So the same function handles both of those. And then we have one function that handles getting their age and the same function getting their lucky number.